scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Guilt, not guilt in a negative way, will never allow me to dare complain before God. There are too many stories in my life that show the faithfulness of God. I will be wicked and heartless to ever claim he's not faithful. So for me, if I do not have a language of gratitude, I'd rather not speak. I'd rather sing and worship him. There are too many reasons in my life. I am a testimony of how God can take a man from nothing to something how would i be so stupid to complain shout around he's giving me what money cannot buy his presence listen if you have a property they call you a rich man but someone can bully you and collect it the government can seize it from you are we together? If you have investments all over the world, they call you a business mogul. But everything can crash and fail in one day. Are we together? If you have a political position, it is not infinite, it is not everlasting. Are we together? Even if you are a monarch, the reality of death and time can catch up with you. But when he gives you his presence, there is no way to find it and collect it from you. It's not a commodity that belongs to this earth realm. It's a reality that is beyond this realm. It will buy anything. The presence of God is the master capital. It's bigger than land. Bigger than degrees. Bigger than anything. Please believe me. The most expensive commodity is the presence of God when you have it you have access to kings and their treasures when you have it you have access to businessmen and their wisdom when you have it you have access to royalties and their sacrifices they will bring to you the rewards of their years of labor and beg you to collect it in exchange for the presence of God never Never you think the presence of God is just a way of feeling spiritual. Then you quickly feel spiritual. Then you concentrate on what you think will make you successful. No, only a fool does that. The presence of God gave the nation of Israel gold and silver in one day. What they could not get in 430 years. The presence of God became for them a pillar of cloud by day. And of fire by night. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when you hear a man of God talk so much about the presence of God, please look up. It's easy to think the man of God is speaking because his life is now comfortable. You know, that's what people think in church. When a preacher is talking like this, you know, they feel ah, you are doing well, you are enjoying, 
why will you not talk about the presence of God? But you need to ask how the person started and what brought the person to the current level. Are we together? What you are seeing now is not a seed, it's a harvest. Are we together? Yes. Never covet any man's glory. Pay attention to the story. The story reveals the process. The story reveals the sacrifice. We live in a generation where we are obsessed with results. And that is important. But we focus so much on the end of the results. We want finished products. But we do not pay attention to how the things are made. Hallelujah. What you are learning will give you anything you admire now. So forget about the admiration and focus on the training. The training will inevitably bring you to the place of glory. Father, help us tonight in the name of Jesus. Bless you. Good evening, everybody. Just turn to your left and right and tell your neighbor, good evening. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, pick up your pen, paper. Let's get to work. There's a lot to do. The Glory Revealed Part 2. Last week, we started a series, The Glory Revealed. It's a series that is supposed to guide us excuse me and teach us the principles how a man's life can become a reflection of all the possibilities that consist in God hallelujah please try to get last week's teaching is free you can get it after the service especially for those who are online following us there's so many people and we love you you're part of us the Lord honor you in Jesus name and I spoke to us last week and I started laying a foundation that the pursuit of godliness, please listen, the pursuit of godliness, the pursuit of relevance in the kingdom begins with an encounter. Say an encounter. The journey of a believer does not start with learning principles and laws and formulas. Business people teach you that if you want to arrive, get formula A, add it to B, and that's important. But any time you begin to study anything outside of an encounter first, it will waste your time and lead you to error. Because the kingdom is regulated by a person, not just systems. It is a person who created the systems. So you have to encounter the person Christ. Are we together? So your journey does not begin by learning about tithes and offerings all the laws that we shared in the series before this, they are very important. But you must start with an encounter. When you meet the person, then he will guide you. Because the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. There is a method. There is a formula. It seems right to a man. But the Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. And um, we discussed the concept of glory. I'm just doing a quick recap. How that glory refers to the essence of a thing. The character. Are we together? The, 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 the word glory is from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek word is doxa. It's a reflection of the true nature. When the true nature of a thing is expressed, we call it the glory of that thing. Are we together now? And then another interesting understanding of the word glory is the possibilities. That, that's the one I want us to pay attention to. Is the one that is relevant in this series. The glory of a man means all the possibilities that are inherent within the man. The glory of this mic is revealed in its ability to amplify sound. Are we together? When you go to buy this mic now and they tell you this singular mic I'm holding is say 200,000. You look at this. Until you connect it to something, then you will see the potentials. Are we together? This is 200,000 for instance because it has an ability to amplify my sound. So I can stand here and speak and people down the second overflow and everywhere can hear. So the glory of this mic is the possibility inherent in it. Are we together now? So when we talk of the glory of God, it refers to all the possibilities that are encapsulated in the person, God. 
and that is reflected in the person Christ because Christ is the full expression of the image of God are we together so Jesus came to open us up reveal to us the glory of the father an example of the manifestation of that glory was seen in the healings when he came to people they never knew he had the supernatural ability to heal and so he would tell someone pick up your mat stand up and go glory revealed i did tell us last week that until glory is revealed it cannot be appreciated glory that is concealed cannot be appreciated if you buy a phone the pack is only a packaging but the real product is inside if you keep the pack even if it's for 10 years it will not profit you but when you open it then you see the content and you appreciate everything that is there there are phones for instance that can just make calls text messages and a few things there are other phones that can browse at at a level of speed you can connect to several things watch videos and the rest those possibilities are the glory in the phone which is an expression of the wisdom of the company that made it so the phone reflects the excellency of samsung or any other lg or whatever product are we together now so christ came as a manifestation of the glory of god the invisible god yahweh found earthly expression and everything jesus did was a sample of what god can do he didn't show us everything he only showed us small and said you continue and he sent the spirit of glory are we together to continue so the bible was not supposed to just end with jesus we are epistles we are an unfolding of other dimensions of glory that are possible if jesus were still on the earth would have written more than would have written probably there would have been an episode where he walked on a zinc and came down probably there would have been an episode where he made a dry ground to be full of water but the holy spirit came and through jesus showed us an example that we should follow in his steps so the goal of this series is to teach us the mystery behind spiritual alignment that can make a man become a reflector of the glory of god that all there is all that there is to you is not just your human nature there is more say amen, amen. so the glory of a thing reflects the possibilities and um, we began to explain how that one of the keys to experiencing the glory of god is to believe that there is such a possibility you see brothers and sisters god is not a man that he should lie are we together not the son of man that he should repent if a jimmy has fifty thousand hidden in his suit pocket is hidden and we cannot see it if he tells me and says i have fifty thousand my attitude towards him will show whether i believe it or not are we together if i tell you right now on this table there is a phone there is this assuming you cannot see it anything you cannot see you will have to use my person to validate your trust because you cannot see it are we together so faith is that response that is entirely based on your perception of who god is because until there is a manifestation you do not yet know once you have seen it once and again it's no longer faith it's called trust trust is based on a track record of a man's experience faith is based on your knowledge of his person if I tell you after service there will be free bus transport to take you assuming you are a new person who just came here it's up to you to look at me and gauge could this person be lying and then if you wish you can ask somebody who has had an experience with me the last time he spoke like this was there a boss and the person tells you yes so you believe not because you have seen a boss you believe because you think I am too big to lie to you that's what faith is predicated upon so when god says i want to reveal my glory it's up to you to first believe could god be joking is he playing games with me 
does he have the ability to back up his claims and this is why we have the bible the bible is a compendium of god's speakings versus their manifestations in the life of people abraham i will make you at the end of it he made abraham he told gideon you're a mighty man of valor at the end of it Gideon became a mighty man. He told the apostles you will receive power at the end of it. The Bible says, then he swore by himself that by these two immutable things, it will be impossible for God to lie to the end that you may find a consolation that every time you see God speak, you take him seriously. Say, I believe in God. Say it again, I believe in God. Hallelujah. Today I want you to open up your spirit because I believe with all my heart that what I'm about to share with you will truly bless you. In the part two of this series, we are going to be considering the anointing. The glory revealed part two. We are looking at the anointing. That agency that can help men to reveal the possibilities in God. I said to you how that the glory of a man, listen please, is an unveiling of the possibilities that are in that man but there is a spiritual agency that empowers men to reveal this possibility the name given to it is the anointing acts chapter 1 verse 8 hmm. please be very sensitive a lot will happen tonight a lot will happen tonight this series is meant to truly bring an anointing to your life that you can hold on to it you can run with it and you can take every mountain that stands before you say amen, amen. acts chapter 1 verse 8 let's read together one to read but ye shall receive what hold on you shall receive the word power there is the word dunamis it's not the word exousia. There are many words that are translated power and authority interchangeably. Two of them that are very important is exousia and dunamis. Exousia is erroneously translated power in many places in scripture. But exousia is not power. Exousia is an authorization. The capacity to stand in the office of someone and represent him is called exousia. But this is not exousia. This talks of force. The agency that compels compliance. It's called power. Dunamis. So it says you shall receive power. After, read on, that the Holy Ghost is what? Come upon you. What will that power make you do? Read on. It says and ye shall be unto me. Where? In Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. So his idea is that you become witnesses. Who is a witness? A witness is one who validates that the claim of another is true. Are we together? If we are in the court, for instance, please pay attention. I'm establishing a lot. If we're in the court of law, right, and someone stole my phone and while he was stealing it promised saw the person are we together and now we're in the court of law and i say no this guy sam stole my phone the judge will ask do you have any witness and then we will bring promise let's assume promise was snapping and in the process of snapping he snapped the man picking it that is the evidence a witness is only a witness because he has an evidence without an evidence you cannot be a witness please listen without an evidence you cannot be a witness i can be i mean a Jimmy can be my brother but in this case he cannot be a witness he can support me in prayer but when we stand in court he does not have evidence everybody say evidence I'm building a case here so promise comes before the judge and then he says are you a witness to this he says yes produce your evidence then he produces a photo and that photo shows the person stealing and based on that evidence the judge so the evidence is the power that has forced the phone to return back to me 
the anointing is the proof that you are a witness the anointing is the evidence when you stand in this court of life and life places a demand on you to prove that God is with you when your family background brings before you a mountain to prove whether God is with you when the limitation in Nigeria stands before you and says you are a Christian prove that God is with you he says you must receive power the authorization you cannot be a witness so you are going around telling people Jesus saves and they are saying what do you mean Jesus saves Buddha also saves so what is your evidence and then the person levitates in the air this is my evidence Buddha empowered me and they say what is your evidence and then you say baba baba ba, ba. and they say nonsense that's not evidence hmm. are we together when someone comes up on the scene and says I am a free mason I worship the flying dragon of Asia the spirit called mammon and this is the evidence I have built empires by her wisdom what is your evidence and then you say I'm a Christian I'm just going to heaven what is your evidence please pay attention to tonight's service because life will ask you that question I will never follow a God who cannot prove himself I'm not one of those religious people I took time to ask God questions before I started ministry because the world will ask me questions you will stand before businessmen who are idol worshippers the spirit will give them ideas and they will move forward and you come ranting and speaking like a fool you will stand before arrows that fly by day and noisome pestilences what is your evidence when there is a plague moving and it does not affect you it's an evidence that there is another life in you please hear me this is what I'm trying to teach you in this series There must be an evidence. Let me tell you why we are talking too much in church. A believer was never designed to be a noise maker. We were designed to be proof producers. Our noise is a, is a cover up for insufficient evidence. Do you know you can be in a court and speak and the lawyer will say this evidence is not strong enough. There are few things the church is doing that unbelievers are not doing. Very few. Very few. I have studied a lot on world religions. I study a lot on religions and so many things. Christianity is not the fastest growing religion. I hope you are aware. I will tell you why. Because our strategy is wrong. They have proposed strategies that are not very effective. The religions that represent the fastest growing religions, you never see crusades. Are we together? You never see tracts. You never see people with talking, moving with Bibles all around. But there is a harvest per second, per second. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. He's working in me. God's ability. God's ability. He's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. Your hands on your head in one minute and pray and say lord there must be an evidence an evidence i'm tired of bringing mockery to your name and misrepresenting you go ahead and pray he shall receive power power not stories power not stories power Oh, 
Sheba kata bana na bana na bana na bos. Rekete koto shoba kata. Embrekete le kata ba 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 ba. Hallelujah! Please sit down. Fire is burning in this place. I tell you. Acts chapter ten, verse thirty-eight. Please help us, media. I came to challenge you. The way we are doing church and Christianity, we are about to disappoint God. We need evidences. Not evidences just from preachers. Are we together? I will never follow a God who cannot prove himself. I'm not one of those people they like. They say, just believe. Don't worry in his time. No way. No way. No way. Before Gideon accepted the assignment, he asked questions. Before Mary accepted, she, she said, how shall these things be? Because according to my knowledge, a man and a woman will produce pregnancy. But he said, the power of the highest. In other words, there is another root in the spirit. You have known that it's only a man and a woman. You have known that you only wait for five years to get a job, but there is another route. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. See, I bring you another way. There is not only one way of doing things. The world has created their way, but God has his way. How God anointed Jesus... Let me tell you what that means. Look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who was anointed this way? Jesus. He was not anointed three days to the cross. He would have had 33 years of wasted experience and three days of impact. He was anointed before how many of us have been taught to start moving without empowerment? He says, as a result of that, who went about doing what? Doing good. An example of the good he did was to heal all that were oppressed of the devil. That was not the only good he did. He multiplied bread, doing good by the anointing. He forced money inside the mouth of a fish, doing good by the anointing. He multiplied bread and fish by the anointing. He calmed the storm by the anointing. He vindicated a woman who was on her way to death by the anointing. He raised the dead by the anointing. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all that they, all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Divine presence bringing the anointing in the life of Jesus and Jesus moved around doing good you are going around trying to do good willing to do good meaning to do good but good is not coming because good is not just a desire there is an empowerment men are empowered to do good I want to help the poor there is an anointing that helps you to do good Write this down. What is the anointing? Please participate and listen patiently and carefully. Those outside in any of the overflows, just pay attention. You may be standing, but listen. Number one, the anointing is God's seal of authorization upon you to represent Him. The anointing is God's seal of authorization upon a man upon any man not a preacher God's seal of authorization upon you to represent him every military man has a uniform the uniform is a seal of authorization when the military man is in mufti he has no right to do certain things but when he wears his uniform his uniform and his badge is a seal of authorization are we together? Mm. Paul said, Paul, I, Paul, a man approved of God with miracles, signs, and diverse manifestations. 
approved of God. That is the evidence of my apostleship. Hallelujah. So number one, God's seal of authorization upon a man to represent him. Number two, the anointing is God's capacity to produce change and compel compliance. Write it down. Underline compel. Because we live in a stubborn world that will not change by desire. It takes power to change things. It takes power to change genotype from SS to AA. It takes power to change a cancerous cell to a healthy cell. It takes power to raise the dead. It takes power to prosper. Hallelujah. Are we together? It takes power to prosper. We all want to prosper, but we neglect the place of power. Many people bow to gods, bow to spirits, receive power from them. They sacrifice children, turn them upside down and drain their blood. And the man takes his pen upon that blood and goes to sign a proposal. And end whenever you see it you must approve it that's power and yet many believers just move around and they ask you why should you get this proposal you say i'm sincere welcome to the world where only mantles speak your long story and english will not do you much when moses went to pharaoh he said pharaoh this is what the lord said pharaoh said nonsense he said my rod continue the conversation i don't have time for this rubbish janice and jembers brought their own rod when he swallowed it moses said take note of this i'm coming back and he left after nine plagues pharaoh was still hardened then the bible says yet one more plague will i bring upon pharaoh and the nation of israel he says afterwards he shall let you go and he didn't let them go the bible says they were driven to go out they didn't wait for their dough to rise to make chinchi. They were in a hurry. They made it anyhow because a man was tired. May you anoint in weary darkness to let you go. I'm not motivating you. There is an unction a man can carry. No matter how mad a man is, he will not enter fire by mistake. Give him two minutes. That madness will rearrange itself until it comes out because fire was not designed to fear the bible says he maketh his angels winds no more spirits and his ministers flames of fire there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of Jesus. So break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Please look up. Someone came to me and said, Every night there's a spirit that comes to him and oppresses him. Just when things are about to happen, a stranger steps into his room and i said it's because that stranger has not seen power the bible says no man can enter a man's house and spoil him what will you first do discuss suggest bind the strong man he says and then you spoil his goods everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen I prophesy to you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen sing it one more time everything that was lost shall be returned unto you please sit down have you seen someone steal a laptop because he saw a room empty and you steal the laptop and run away with it are we together run away with the laptop because you are more powerful than the person 
Then what does the owner do? He goes to the police station and carries a policeman. Are we together? They hold guns and they enter a van. Then they come and meet the owner after two weeks and say, we are going to kill you. Power above his power. What does he do? He shows you the laptop is still lying down there quietly and he carries it. The Bible says when you catch a thief, if he gives you back what he has stolen, he has still cheated you. He will restore tenfold. That profit must be added. In the realm of the spirit, when you catch a thief, he doesn't pay back what he has stolen because time would have gone. Are we together? If the breakthrough had come in 2005, by now, you would have helped many people. So now that it did not come, you're not just going to receive it like that. If you receive it, you did, it was not restoration. It was just progress continued. The capacity to produce change and compel compliance. If Buhari announces right now and says tomorrow is public holiday, assuming tomorrow were a working day, immediately he speaks. All the armed forces and the military people and paramilitary, he is using authority, not power. What he's using is exousia. His office as a president to speak. But dunamis are the soldiers. So they move on the street with cane, guns, tear gas, and uh, black maria. What are they doing? Compelling compliance. If they find you roaming around, still trying to sell drugs in your pharmacy, they ask you, did you not hear what the president said? And then you, they hop you into the black maria and penalize you. God makes the statement... The earth is the Lord's. He's waiting for you to create that compliance. Are we together now? Mm. Number three, we're still defining the anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing, write it down, is the empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. The empowerment. The capacity to manifest the possibilities in God. The anointing is the empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. It's not enough to chorus and say God is love. It's not enough to chorus and say God is mighty. Are we together now? Your life must produce the evidence. Number four, the last definition. What is the anointing? The anointing is the agency to reveal the love and the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. The agency to reveal the love and the sovereignty of Jesus. There are two things God is obsessed that they be revealed on the earth. Number one is his love. Number two is his sovereignty. His might as the sovereign ruler. That's where the word Lord comes from. There is a desire in God to see his love find expression in the earth. There is a desire in God to see his sovereignty find expression. Hallelujah. There are two dimensions to the anointing. Please just write this quickly. That's not really where we're dwelling. We preach many messages on the anointing, but just for us to know. There are two dimensions of the anointing, broadly speaking. Number one, There is the personal anointing that empowers a man to grow and be like Jesus. There is a personal anointing that empowers a man to grow spiritually and be like Jesus. People like Kenneth E. Hagin call it the anointing within. The personal anointing that is for your spiritual growth to, to help you grow to the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. It is the anointing that teaches you all things. It is the unction from the Holy One that empowers you. Right? The grace of God has appeared unto all men, teaching us to say no. There is the personal anointing. 
to grow and represent Christ. 1 John 2.20, media please. 1 John 2.20. That's the first dimension of the anointing. Every believer in Christ is entitled to that dimension of the anointing. Even that dimension itself can grow. Everyone is entitled. Read after me please. One to read. It says, but ye have an unction from the Holy One. And as a result, you know all things. You have an unction. Whether you are a preacher, whatever, you, if you are in Christ, you are entitled to this dimension of the anointing. Hallelujah. The second dimension of the anointing. And trust me, I know what I'm saying. The second dimension of the anointing is the anointing that is given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment. The second dimension of the anointing is the anointing given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment. That is the anointing of your call. The anointing of your destiny. The anointing of your destiny is not the same as the anointing of your personal spiritual growth. It's the anointing that backs you up to make sure you fulfill purpose. The anointing that is given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment. Write this down. It is the anointing that reveals your destiny. It is the anointing that empowers you to fulfill your assignment on earth. That one comes with discovering your call. That one comes with discovering your place in life and destiny. It doesn't come just because you are born again. Are we together? If God calls you into ministry, there is an anointing that follows you. If God calls you into business, there is an anointing that follows you. The moment you assume that position of being an ambassador, you are ready to take one of the seven mountains that control humans. One of the seven mountains, the mountains of religion, the mountains of government, the mountains of, of, of arts and entertainment, the mountain of media, the mountain of education, the mountain of family, and the mountain of finance. Any one of those mountains God sends you, there is an anointing. Are we together? Because there are rulers of darkness. The Bible tells us, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, he says, but against what? Principalities, against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places these are rankings and all these spirits are strategically stationed on this mountain listen to my message give me this mountain there i teach on the spiritual dimension of success success is not just by degrees success is not just by intelligence success is not just by being scientific there is a spirituality because there are giants on every mountain but Caleb said give me this mountain hallelujah so there is an anointing that comes with your call there is an anointing that comes with your assignment when God empowers you he puts an anointing upon your life an anointing upon the ministry he has committed to you are we together there is an anointing upon Benny Hinn that produces that result. Now, let me tell you something about this second dimension of the anointing. Listen. This second dimension of the anointing is not operational anytime. I want you to understand this. Are we together? There is a timing and there are seasons of its operation. This anointing for your assignment is not operational anytime. There are three laws that govern its operation. One, a demand from those who desire to be recipients of it. It responds to faith. It responds to desire. Are we together? The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, how that when he was passing the gates, beautiful, the man was begging for arms. And Peter told him, look on us. And he looked at them, expecting to receive. And he says, silver and gold. That expectation provoked the anointing. Blind Bartimaeus cried, Thou son of David, he provoked the anointing. That is the anointing people like Kenneth E. Hagin would call the anointing upon. It doesn't come 
all the time anybody that tells you it comes all the time is a liar and doesn't understand anything about the anointing if it's operational in you all the time it will kill you you do not have the physical capacity your body does not have that stamina have you finished preaching and you went back and felt tired it lifted that's what jesus meant by virtue has gone out of me when virtue leaves you prophets in ancient times when the anointing landed upon them for their experience when it lifted some of them were sick for days they had to eat herbs to recover from the stream are we together this anointing is activated at the point of delivery at the point where you have to do that which you were born to do so you can be sleeping in your house the moment there is a demand and it is with respect to your assignment the anointing is like a lion within you are we together that's the reason why you can see a man of God you may not even be able to touch him when he's on stage after the meeting you are hugging him slapping him because something has lifted but if by any mistake you're hugging you apply faith to it it will return that's what makes people just they are laughing and the next thing the power of God because their hunger did not die with the service are we together so many people were touching Jesus and a woman came he said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. Jesus was not even aware, but it was automatic. The moment there was a demand, that anointing, that messianic anointing that will fulfill Isaiah 61, to bind up the brokenhearted. The anointing that is given on account of your assignment. Two scriptures to help us. Isaiah 61, please will not read it, um, will not project it, just write it. Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, upon me because he gave me an assignment that requires an authorization. So because of that, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And with that Spirit came an anointing to preach glad tidings, to bind up the brokenhearted, right? To set the captives free to open up the doors of prison to declare the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god to comfort all day that morning zion to give them beauty for ashes a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified the anointing came for that reason jesus reiterated it again in luke chapter 4 when you read from verse 14 to 18 the bible says they brought to him right that which was written by Isaiah the prophet and then he opened it and he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me and at the end of it he said this day is this scripture fulfilled i have come as a fulfillment of this then he began to do it in one of the synoptic gospels there and then he told a man with a withered hand stretch forth your hand as a proof that i have come What is the purpose of the anointing? I've said it to us, but we must. The purpose is, is encapsulated in the definition. But the purpose of the anointing. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. Shabba kapara kusuba talabaya. Isaiah 10, 27. I'd like us to read it together. It's projected. One to read shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed why listen please look up there are yokes there are burdens there are afflictions upon the lives and the destinies of men upon the families of men robbing men of their dignity mocking God's statement that he made man like him and it takes the anointing to correct that error are we together the anointing comes to lift burdens the anointing comes to break yokes the anointing comes to open up prison doors to them that are bound. 
Number two, Psalm 66, verse 3. Psalm 66, verse 3. Let's read it, please. Just write it and look up and let's read. One, two, read. Say unto God. Uh huh. Read on. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. Not through the greatness of grammar, not through English and negotiation. On the strength of the excellency of your power. Listen, let me tell you something. You are liable for oppression the moment you find yourself here. Unfortunately, it is not given to you to choose to arrive here. Are we together? The moment you are born, there are children who from birth, they are already born with all kinds of sicknesses. Are we together? They never chose it. It's the reality. Listen, let me tell you. The moment you cross the second heavens, the domain of evil can find expression. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, the Bible says. But from the second heavens, demonic activities are authorized to find expression. Down till under the earth. That's what happens to children. The moment, it's not a man and a woman that produces children. They just create the body for the child to come. But the moment that child arrives, right from the interface of the second heavens, war begins over the destiny of the child. It's left for the father and the mother to be spiritual enough to secure the destiny of the child or careless enough to allow anything happen. Are we together? Yeah. That is why you hear that children are initiated from the womb. How can you initiate a child whose faculty of reasoning is not there? Are we together? Is it not in your Bible that John was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb? How did he pray in tongues? How did he manifest that? Hallelujah. I want to show you four keys to accessing the anointing. This, this is the place where I want us to be sensitive now. Because you are not only going to hear, you are going to receive. Hallelujah. Please believe me. You are not going to hear alone. You are going to receive. I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. I enter the Holy of Holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. Holy Spirit. We wait on you, Holy Spirit. I wait on you, Holy Spirit. I wait on you for fire. Kaba kaba ya, for fire. Lord, we wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. 
you can make tonight your night of encounter listen there was a time in my life the anointing was not upon me I was not born with it are we together a time can come and tonight can be that time if you believe but if you are careless Elijah said if you can see me was he blind it's a spiritual language there is a measure of sensitivity it takes to truly grab the anointing it's not about falling down look at me it's not about falling down it's about your spirit station you are not just hearing you are seeing what the Lord is saying let me tell you something the difference between you and the next level of your life is the anointing there is nothing that will cover for the absence of the anointing I know it you reign you ancient Zion's king Kadosh, Kadosh You were mighty on your throne Just follow me, follow me You reign You ancient Zion's king Kadosh, Kadosh You were mighty on your throne Break forth Thou fountains of the deep and we God you were mighty on the throne. Yeah, yeah, you're mighty in this place. Shalom, shalom, my father, shalom, shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom. Jehovah, Baba Shakatabayada. Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome in. sensitive what are the keys that have turned ordinary men to wonders workers of miracles what can a man do what is the secret that can open up this fountain in the spirit for no man is born with this thing hear me there is a key there are keys no man is born with unction Jesus himself what can make a man of God so powerful that your words can create an effect in the life of men you are speaking from one end and someone outside is shaking like a leaf what is the key please hear me this is an office I'm not speaking to you as a man I can speak to you as a man who has researched this truth but I speak to you as a custodian of the mystery of this thing. I may not show you, I may not boast that I know business principles. I may not boast that I know on leadership. But I can teach you the mysteries of the presence of God. For it is an office. It was given to me by Jesus Christ. The angels bow before him. You're beautiful. Mm. You 
beautiful The heavens are not the door The angels bow before you You're beautiful You're beautiful Just follow me tonight Heaven and earth adore you Angels bow before you You're beautiful Heavens and earth adore you. The angels bow before you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Oh, 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 oh. understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will walk in a new dimension believe me understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ministry will change like day and night understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will become like a God upon the earth understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ranking will change instantly in the spirit understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your life will become a wonder it's not by quoting scripture it's a realm you can stand in number one the first key to accessing the anointing is salvation don't trivialize it write it and take it as serious as anything there are many people in church who are not born again but they want power there are many pastors on the altar who are not born again but they want power you can fast as an unbeliever you will never find power you can be the PA of a man of God and not be born again please hear me that they ordained you does not mean you are born again are you hearing what I'm saying ah, I tell you I sense fire in this place that you were ordained they poured oil on you does not mean that you are born again let me tell you we can do what we know to do on earth but it depends on whether God approves of it or not ah, 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 ah. That's what I'm hearing in the spirit. John chapter 1 verse 12 we have to hurry up because God will soon sit in this place the weight of his glory but as many as received him meaning not everybody will receive him as many as received him to them gave he what? power the power is for those who receive him not those who are near him not those who go to where he is proximity to god is not salvation let me tell you the truth 
there are so many people who need to examine their born again I am telling you this there are many people who are not born again are we together and I don't mean just by religious activities no an encounter with Jesus Christ no there are people who are not born again you will say this and many people will argue with you but the way the early church were born again when they were born again fire fell on them salvation the power to become is for those who receive for those who receive him they are the type God will back God does not back everybody just because Jesus died for everybody does not mean you just speak and things happen you know it's and, and please if you're a pastor here hear me aside from the impartation you receive tonight open your eyes don't think it's just by wearing suit and holding a mic no, the power of God is here all these things we keep doing we fool ourselves nothing will cover for the absence of an encounter not suit not English not Greek and Hebrew there must be a track record in the secret place he said that which I tell you in the secret declare thou on the mountain top you don't just come and stand and because they gave you a mic you expect things to happen no sir human beings are not robots are we together human beings are not idiots do you know the power it takes to lift a man off his seat? I don't mean physically alone. Track record. Salvation. Number two. The second key. Give us 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. The second key. Pay attention. To a rich, heavy deposit of the anointing upon your life that is undeniable is addiction and passion for God and his kingdom addiction passion I'll give you more than a song for a song in itself is that what you have required you search much deeper within to the way things are You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus There is no power for part-time Christianity there is no power for part-time addiction there is no power for part-time ministry so many pastors are part-time ministers by part-time I don't mean that you are doing another thing part-time with God and part-time with ambition looking for relevance joining all kinds of stupid associations to quickly rise the ladder of ministry no it is God that lifts men please hear me your addiction for God must supersede your addiction for money must supersede your addiction for church your addiction for Versace and Boss and Gucci your addiction for cars and houses if you want God's power except if you want to go and see a herbalist but if you want the power that comes from heaven, it must match your level of addiction. You will never have more power beyond your addiction. No. Your addiction defines the flow of the anointing. How addicted are you to God as a person? Two, how addicted are you to his kingdom? To seeing his kingdom come? Don't say I'm addicted. It shows in your giving. It shows in your time. It shows in your service in the house of God. Don't tell me you are addicted to God when you can be comfortable and come and sit in a ministry for months and years and you are not part of building that house. You are not addicted. No. It says as the deer pants after the water brooks, so my soul pants after you. It was the psalmist that said this. It says... 
Oh Lord, you are my God. He said, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Right? To see your power and your glory. Let me tell you something. Many Christians in our generation, we love God. We are born again. But we are too ashamed of our addiction. Addiction. The same way, have you seen someone addicted to uh, what they call this thing? Indian hemp. The person will not mind coming to meet a small child and say, sir, please give me 10 naira. I have not eaten. He's lying so obviously, but because he cannot help it. If you can still manage your passion for God, you don't love him enough. Oh, let's, let's be real. Let's, let's not act like fools. You are joking. You want power. I'm telling you, you must fall in love with God with all your heart not fall in love with the healing anointing many of us are i you know i pray for people and most times when people come that i pray for them so that they will receive double portion or triple portion or whatever i know they don't love god they even love me more than god i see it in their expression that they only love me because we have taught that you should honor a man you know that they love me more than god you know they love that anointing more than God. Anything above God, even if he gave you, is an idol. Whatever it is, please hear me. Do you love God more than your beauty? Do you love God more than power? Do you love God more than koinonia? Do you love God more than Joshua Selman? That's addiction. Do you love God more than marriage? Do you love God more than, more than whatever it is? All these carnal things that take our time is fall in love with God in a way that nothing in time people get jobs when they lose jobs they backslide what a shame to your passion for God you are in a relationship someone says I will marry you all of a sudden he says I'm not doing and you leave God God I'm angry Aye. Jesus told the disciples he said will you also go and they said to whom shall we go where, where are we going leaving you is no longer an option if you never bless me i still i mean i still owe you my love forever please let me tell you something if you want power from god stop seeking god just because of things stop seeking god just because of things oh lord i want your time i want your hand and we bend god's hand with fasting and prayer How many pastors want to see God glorified in their assemblies? Very little. I can tell you this. Many pastors fast. Some of you are like that. Probably you came from somewhere. You are sitting, boiling, waiting for the time of impartation. And God is saying, calm down, not so. So that you will not go back disappointed. God is not a herbalist. There is a protocol to true spiritual power. Addiction. Addiction. Outspoken Christianity outspoken Christianity not the type you off your ringtone because you are in a place that 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 will fall your hand if God falls your hand you are falling I tell you I rather be a doorkeeper the psalmist said I will trade my palace and its honor to serve God forever you will be Forever you will be the Lamb upon the throne, the Lamb upon the throne, and I gladly bow my knee. To worship you alone. MOG. It's time to seek God more than ministry. Your ministry is distracting you and killing you from God. You have carried ministry and put on your head like a luggage that came from demons. And you, you will afford for your secret place to suffer so that you will fulfill a ministerial schedule. I can cancel any ministration for my secret place. You know, we think being busy is ministry. Oh, today I'm in Hawaii. Tomorrow I'm in Dubai. Next tomorrow I'm in South Africa. Next tomorrow I'm in UK. Then I'm in Aquaibon. I'm in London. And we think because we're hopping up and down, 
we are doing ministry let me tell you you may be doing all these things but before god you are not doing anything your heart is more important than your voice to god don't think because you are always talking it means god is hearing you no your heart number three let's hurry up i want us to pray what is the third key the baptism of the holy ghost the third key to fire in your life is the baptism of the holy ghost slash prayers so you write it slash prayers that the experience of the baptism of the holy spirit first corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 the baptism of the holy spirit backed up by the ability to pray in tongues fluent tongues now there's no time for me to go into this discussion please don't stop mike don't stop you see this concept of prayer and the concept of the baptism of the holy spirit has been hijacked by satan please listen to me it is not a denominational perspective it has nothing to do with pentecostalism and charismatism i was never filled with the holy ghost in any church there is no pastor no denomination that can claim that it was because i was in the assembly no god did that for me specifically so that i will be able to communicate these truths to people the devil has cheated us and i know many of us is in fear so that we don't get into witchcraft and diabolism i understand and i respect your passion but listen to me if you want power in this kingdom that endowment with power that endowment with power ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost comes upon you acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 says now when the day of pentecost were fully come he said they were gathered together in one accord verse 2 says suddenly suddenly not gradually the baptism does not happen gradually suddenly are we together suddenly they had a sound that sound as of a mighty rushing wind and the bible says it came and filled the room and then the bible says they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire and it rested on each each one of them not some they're not as shared each one of them then the bible says then they began to speak with tongues as the holy ghost gave them utterance they were 120 in the upper room it was such an experience that all the people around that place came and saw the mighty things they were doing and they said these men were drunk with new wine they linked that experience with wine the same way a man drinks beer one bottle two bottles ten bottles at the 11th one is not himself again another influence takes him so when they saw the men he said you are behaving like those who have taken this thing are we together now and then in acts chapter 3 still well acts chapter 2 when peter finished preaching to them the bible says they were caught to the heart and this is what they said men and brethren what shall we do and then he says repent for the remission of your sins and then he says you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children and as many as are far off as many as the lord will call that included us are we together yeah in acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 is the most classic explanation of the baptism of the holy spirit paul having passed through the upper coast the bible says he came and he found certain disciples disciples they were already born again give us acts please 19 1 to 4 they had passed through the upper coast the bible says paul came and found certain disciples are we together and then he asked them a question verse 2 he says have ye received the holy ghost since ye believe meaning it's not the same experience 
has been born again initiated by the same spirit but there are two separate experiences have you received the holy ghost since he believed and then they replied him they said we have not even heard if there be any holy ghost and paul was surprised and then he says unto what then were you baptized he was asking them a question and they said the baptism of john then Paul began to explain to them he said the baptism of John was a baptism of repentance that they should believe on the one who was to come that means it was Jesus Christ and afterwards Paul said the, the Bible says they were now baptized to the name of Jesus Christ and then Paul laid his hands upon them and then the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues right they were 12 in number have you received the Holy Ghost have you received that empowerment since you believed when you read let's read from 18 18 the last five verses if you can give it to us right the bible talks about a very intelligent man hallelujah um no not 19 verse 18 18 acts 18 acts 18 please the last four verses acts 18 are you with us acts 18 okay let's just let's just turn there so we don't waste time okay now the bible says give us from verse 24 let's start from 24 listen to this story a certain jew named who apollos and the Bible says Apollos was born at Alexandria. He said he was a man who was mighty in scriptures. He was eloquent. He was an orator. Are we together? And then the Bible says he came to Ephesus. Ephesus is not the place you come and preach nonsense. It's where Paul got his revelation of the highest church truth. There was a goddess called Diana in Ephesus. She was the goddess that controlled that center of economy. So you had to be sound and mighty in scriptures. Now Apollos came. Next verse. 25. He said the man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And was what? Fervent in spirit. Zealous. The Bible says. And he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But he had a limitation. What was his limitation? Knowing only the baptism of John. He was born again and he knew repentance. Like many people in churches, like many pastors, they are zealous, they love God, but the scope of the understanding of God is the baptism of John. Let's see what happened. One day, he went to a crusade to impress everybody as usual. He says, and he began to speak in the synagogue and then there were two strange men in that synagogue. There were men who were powerful people of the spirit called Aquila and Priscilla they said when they had him and they they took him with them they said we see zeal in you but you are limited there is a theology that has not been taught to you we want to upgrade your scope of the understanding of God the Bible says they took him hear me and then they says they expounded to him the way of God more what perfectly let's see what he did as a result next verse and when he was disposed and passed to Achaia the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him the Bible says who when he was come he helped them much which believed through grace let's see what he did next verse for he mightily convinced the Jews now he had an evidence he didn't just speak to them in the former verses he was eloquent sorry but now he could convince them that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ this was not just just again there was an evidence there was an empowerment listen you must be tired of explanations oh God is this God is that one miracle can answer a thousand questions there is no amount of message you want to preach that will impress men again. The internet is full of messages. There are all kinds of men of God with perspectives. All across Africa, 
all across the world messages are now free what the world needs is a demonstration of power Romans chapter 8 please verse 19 Romans chapter 8 for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation not the explanation not the discussion let's see it in the new living translation or the message bible i'm looking for the version that says creation is waiting for the sons to reveal who they truly are there is a version like that 8 verse 19 not 20 8 verse 19 8 verse 19 uh, thank you NLT for creation is what eagerly waiting for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are because the Bible says it does not yet appear they are still looking at us and they think we are like them but there is an activity happening in us the Bible says, Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. Are we together? The Bible says, Now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. We are still in the formation, there is still a building. Christ is still being formed in us. Like Paul prayed to the church, he said, My little children, of whom I travel until Christ be formed. For when he's done, let me tell you, he will produce a wonder in our lives first corinthians 2 verse 7 quickly and then we'll go to the last key and we'll pray first corinthians 2 verse 7 he says talking about the mystery of this language of the spirit he said no please give it to us um okay no problem no problem let's just stick it here it says, no, the wisdom we speak, it doesn't make sense, but the Bible calls it the hidden wisdom. God put it like that so that only humble people can walk in it. If you are not humble enough to receive that hidden wisdom, the Bible says we speak, the wisdom we speak of is what? The mystery. Everybody say mystery the same way there is a traditional festival and you see people going around fire and making enchantments and putting fire on their body have you seen that happen and it doesn't burn them they put the fire in their mouth and bring it out they carry knife and put it in their mouth and it enters and brings it out because they are operating on a mystery the bible says to the believer there is a mystery that has been given you It says the mystery of God his plan that was he previously hidden what was it he said even though he made it for our ultimate glory so one secret to your entering the glory is this mystery called tongues when a man locks up himself and begins to pray people say you are just talking nonsense no problem it's the same way you talk nonsense and call it laughter. <laughs> and nobody laughs at you. It's intelligent. In fact, people accuse you for not laughing. Who taught you how to laugh? The same way your cry, as sarcastic as it looks, it compels compassion. Tongues is also like that. Don't let anybody tell you you are taught to pray in tongues. When you slap a baby, Shade, when you gave birth to your child, and they slapped the child and the child started crying who taught the child that they cry with the mouth not the eyes it was programmed there listen i want you to know that the believer is supernatural when you remove the supernatural we are just herbalists leaders or and followers of a religion don't remove the supernatural dimension hallelujah made for our glory any man who does not pray cannot reveal the glory of God. There is a relationship between prayer and power. Acts 1 verse 8, you shall receive power. Acts 2 verse 1 to 4, they receive tongues. 
Jesus didn't say you will receive tongues. He said you receive power. But in Acts chapter 2, they receive tongues. Meaning there is a system that tongues uses to translate and produce power in a man. It was Paul himself that said, I thank my God. I pray in tongues more than ye. Hallelujah. Luke 18 verse 1. He spake a parable unto them to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 17. Pray without season. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. You'll be an irresponsible person. It means pray consistently. The Bible says, and the fire upon the altar, it shall never go down day or night. Let me tell you something. Whatever attacks your prayer life has really destroyed your life. It's cheaper for your finances to be attacked than for your prayer life. It's cheaper, as bad as it is, for your health to be attacked than your prayer life. And let me tell you how Satan attacks you. He makes you to resent everybody that can help you. You fight and quarrel them and push them. When you are alone, then he attacks you. Satan never attacks you until he creates an occasion through bitterness, through anger, through fault finding. So everybody that can help you and intercede for you, he cuts you away from them and then he leaves you alone. Solitude is a sign that darkness is close to you. Listen, listen. Excessive solitude, I'm not talking of just retreating to pray. When there is a desire in you to not hear people, to not listen, you are in a world of your own. It's a sign that darkness is close to you. It's a strategy for your destruction. The last key to receiving unction to reveal the glory is called impartation. The mystery of impartation. Transference of grace. Transference of unction. Transference of power. Numbers chapter 27. We'll just look at one example so that we pray. Let's see what transpired between Moses and Joshua. A classic sign of biblical impartation. Numbers 27. Verse 18 to 23. Numbers chapter 27. Please write this scripture down and study it with all your heart. This was God instructing Moses to prepare Joshua for ministry. Are we together? Are you ready? Let's read. One to read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and do what? Lay your hands upon him. That's what should happen. Next verse. And set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. Are we together? And he says, And thou shalt put some of thine honor. Can you show me where honor is in a man? God said, Don't just through impartation transfer your spirit, transfer your honor. I told you honor is not something you fight for. It's a mantle. That all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. There is a mantle that makes men loyal to a grace. It's not by shouting and saying obey me. There is a mantle. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest who shall speak counsel for him. And so on and so forth and so on and so forth. Now let's see what happened. Deuteronomy chapter 3. Chapter 34 verse 9. Just one scripture. Deuteronomy 34. It's still a continuation of this story. Deuteronomy 34 verse 9. Let's read together. One, two, read. Uh-huh was full of the spirit of wisdom. Why? For Moses had what? Laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him. Listen. You know why people don't listen to you? Because you are trying to do ministry using seniority. 
you are trying to do ministry saying don't disrespect me there is an unction that compels loyalty men are not loyal to a man just because he can preach they will clap for you when you see a ministry that can follow a man unto death brothers and sisters there is a mystery upon his head I can tell you Koinonia has that mystery You see, ba, there are secrets in this kingdom. There are secrets in this kingdom. The one you can find is the one you will live by. The one you do not know is the one that will chain you forever. God said, I want to honor Joshua, but I will not ignore a vessel who is already carrying it. He said, Moses, it is within your power to put your spirit and your honor upon him. Listen, you can carry a man's grace and the virtue of God upon his life and reap. You can trace an anointing and know where it came from. Are we together? You can see a man stand on stage and know that this came from Benihim. This one. You can see this prayer fire and know this one came from Duncan Williams. This one did not just come from this. You can see a prosperity mantle and trace it. Anointings are like address. They can show you where they came from. I'm a product of many anointings. The glory revealed through the anointing. The anointing giving you capacity to produce an evidence. An evidence and evidence there are different kinds of anointings there is the power to prosper shout it say the power to prosper i want you to shout it like you mean it say the power to prosper, the power to prosper. this is what many people need to pray for i'm not against business ideas i teach you principles there's financial dominion but i can tell you there is such a thing as the power to prosper. If you don't have it, I've seen people who have all kinds of business ideas. But the power to prosper is not a business idea. The power to prosper is a grace that compels creation to respond to you in a certain way. Jesus had it. He said, go. Go. And you will see a donkey, a colt. No man had written on it. Bring it. The owner could not say no. What kind of grace is that? That's the grace that will make you tell somebody, we need speakers for our program. And he said, take it. That's the grace that will make somebody say, take my car and be using it for this crusade. There is such a grace. Let me tell you something. How you will know the power to prosper is not in your life is that you pay for everything. If you pay for everything, the power to prosper is not. It's not about being a millionaire. The power to prosper is not about being a millionaire. It's about the supernatural speaking in your life. Men are rising to help you when there is trouble. Listen, if you are in trouble and there is no man who can arise to help you, I'm telling you, the power to prosper is not the power for finances. We have reduced it to money. Every time preachers preach, they, they mean the power to give you dollars. Please, don't insult God. Money was an idea. By the time that scripture was written, there was no naira, there was no dollar. It's the power that moves you forward. Even if it must raise help us from anywhere. I want you to believe this by the grace of God this is how this ministry came the power to prosper listen please I don't know how I don't want you to think money money is part of it if you think money you will be you will think I am saying the power to get money to buy watch and suit that's nonsense that's not what I'm talking about to prosper means to do well to prosper means by all means you will excel are we together the pros the power to prosper is the power that moves men to support your interest at the expense of their own interest when you see a man a man who can leave his own assignment 
and pursue another man's assignment there is power to prosper there that's what God wanted to give us but pastors have told us the power to prosper is the power to buy a nice shoe and you sit down and pray for hours you don't need to be born again to buy a nice shoe you just need to offer value and it will come this is this is not about getting money for shoe the power that causes men to move you forward you can have money but do you have helpers you can have money but do you have endorsers you can have money but do you have men that can lift your hand this is the power to prosper say I need the power to prosper the key to suffering in a Christian's life is to ignore the power to prosper believe me you may get a job very soon you find out that money does not do everything money is not everything money is very important don't get me wrong but money is not everything there are people today who are in houses that they are not paying the rent that's the power to prosper you can have 500,000 to rent a duplex you can have 2.5 million to rent a duplex that's not necessarily the power to prosper that's good financial acumen good financial intelligence and that's commendable but the power to prosper is that you can leave your house with nothing and return back with miracles because there are men stationed anywhere whether you forget your money or not it doesn't make any difference because there is an unction that sends helpers as at when due that's the power to prosper and if our God is for us then who can never stop us and if our God is for us then what can stop us help me Of the power to prosper is the ministry of men in your life the ministry of men in your life help us everywhere please listen it's not just intelligence to produce result by yourself this body is limited there is too much you can do there is only so much you can do with this body are we together yes see let me tell you something if the only job of the power to prosper is to give you money then Bill Gates can mock the church are we together you know we think all there is to the power to prosper is money I don't insult any man of God we have preached this thing but I'm saying we have limited the power to prosper to money so those who don't like money just say no 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 I don't like it to reject the power to prosper is like to cut two of your legs in the spirit how else will you move are we together the Bible says David was in the cave of Adullam by himself all of a sudden 400 men that's the power to prosper they came to him in the cave and they said be a leader of the, over us we will hear you and we will walk with you in ancient times you were not rich if you just had money they can come and beat you and kill you and remove your head and carry the gold you were rich if you had people people it was a battle of territory and loyalty but in our generation now you can be a, a greedy person that just looted from the national treasury and carry money and buy suit and come and deceive us we know what the power to prosper is there are people who are rich but they do not have it that's why they don't give God the glory when you suffer for everything you can't give God the glory are we together you suffer to get a job you suffer to keep it you suffer to buy a car you suffer to change another one you suffer to get your wife pregnant suffering all around how can you give God the glory but when you sit down and watch God God will say son I want to embarrass you stand still you have done something that has touched me stand still hallelujah one time we're coming back from Ekiti and when we're coming back from Ekiti I don't share too much of these testimonies but someone just did a heavy transfer into the ministry's account honestly I don't even know the person I had to ask the protocol people do you know this person help us everywhere not just cash 
not just kind someone will come and meet you and say there is a property somewhere i could not sleep the lord said i should bless you power to prosper someone says from today until december i will fuel the generator of koinonia don't even tell apostle that's the power to prosper they make your journey easy by making you lighter you can have the money but you won't sleep because of it let me tell you one of the graces i trust god to release tonight is the power to prosper i'm explaining it to you so that you will believe if it's not in your life you are going to cry this night because some of us it, once you are stranded you are dead there no helper you call and everybody ends your call it's not about hustling it's about ebenezer the helper of zion are we together if you don't believe what I'm teaching you I don't know how else to explain it to you are we together there are so many people in Koinonia here preparing for marriage the economy of Nigeria has become so fierce if you don't have the power to prosper you will suffer you can get a job after laboring for years in the university you get a job and someone just says where are you from and you say I'm Yoruba he says you are not Hausa leave the job it just brings in sentiment to cancel your five six seven years of labor that's the world we live in now are we together are you my brother are you a Christian or otherwise? Are you this? Are you from the same village? Not what do you have to give? In that world of wickedness, you want to move forward? You want to plant a church? I was not born in Zaria. I'm not from Kaduna State. You don't go to another man's state and do ministry if you don't have the power to prosper. There is loyalty that comes with territory. Are we together? That's why Jesus told the people, start from Jerusalem. But when you go to a foreign territory, brothers and sisters, you need the power to prosper. That's what our fathers have used. And they have opened branches of their ministries in UK, in France. Huh? Someone speaks Yoruba and another person interprets in French. And the people never leave. There is a pastor writing things in France. And people would rather stay there and redeem. MFM is there, moving as if the devil does not exist. You will find places where I was I was dedicating a woman's child. Um, she used to be in Zaria, but now she's in France. She was in Holland. God used us, you know, and then there was a miracle for her. After many years, she had a child. And she went to different churches. The Presbyterian churches there were not dedicating children. They didn't collect tithes, and they were not dedicating children because the government was sanctioning. And I told her, I said, uh-uh. You mean there's no church around? And she said, the only living church in this area is redeemed. I said, redeemed again. Redeemed again. How did you get there now? And the pastor there is a Yoruba person. Come on now. Power to prosper. You enter a land and become indomitable. A firm grasp of territories. Not intimidated by any government. They will come and go. The mystery keeps you there. Now they are downsizing workers between now and december a lot will happen i've told us i told us at first of january this thing will not go well in terms of the economy i'm not a prophet of doom but i told us there is a mystery of exemption that's why god said this are year of multiplied grace and influence isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3 it says gentiles shall come hallelujah if you are looking for a better Nigeria this year, I tell you the truth under God, you are joking. I love Nigeria. Are we together? I'm a very loyal citizen of this nation. But this is prophecy. It's an unfolding of events. Some things will happen. The only thing is that there is an exemption. The power to prosper. Please, you, you, we, when it's time to pray, you will cry it in your life. That's what makes you different from unbelievers. 
Are we together? That's the only condition where you can look at your life and give God glory. You say, no, I know the school fees of my children. Before I will go to pay it, someone has paid it. And he will never tell you who he is. Write it again if you did not write it. The ultimate proof that the anointing to prosper is upon your life is the ministry of men. The ministry of helpers. Not just business ideas. It takes men to make things happen. Have you not seen people with ideas and they died with their ideas? Someone called Pastor Tunde Bakare and told him, he said, I love you and I've invested 200 million in an investment for you. It's just growing. Whenever you need it, they can talk to you. And he said, what for? He said, I'm okay. And the man said, no, I had to do it. You are my pastor. Hi. When a man argues with you about blessing you, there is such a thing and we are going to pray there are many other anointings the power listen the power to heal the sick there are three i'm going to teach us ah, there's no time let me just go straight to the three that the lord told me that's number one the power to prosper number two are you ready it's called resurrection power don't claim you know what it is just listen to me resurrection power is about the apex the zenith of a man's manifestation of the anointing what is resurrection the ability to make dead things come back to life is the hallmark of creation are we together let me tell you something there is resurrection power the bible says Ephesians please help us Ephesians 1 verse 17 we are reading down to 20 for this call Paul says for this cause I Paul I bow my knees right to the father of glory that he may give unto you listen the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light he said that he may what know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints here it comes verse 19 read it if you're a christian one to go and what is the exceeding greatness of his what power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power what mighty power next verse which he wrought in christ when he what raised him the power that can raise a thing that has died is power indeed the power that can heal what is alive is power but the power that can raise what is dead come on you carry that anointing and enter a lifeless environment and something gives life Isaiah 32 verse 15 we are praying this one scripture and then we we'll stand up and pray let me show you that there is an ability that can bring life to dead things it is called resurrection power brothers and sisters get this anointing and your life will change no matter what it is it's a matter of time an influence upon you read it 32 want to read until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then what happens and the wilderness be counted for a fruitful vine uh -huh. and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest that's the power of resurrection you step into a desert place spirit have your way in us today spirit take your throne as we are changed
dimension hear me is the power that restores Ezekiel chapter 37 there is an anointing that can restore I tell you I feel the anointing of the spirit Ezekiel 37 the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me in the spirit listen and set me down in the midst of a valley that was full of what? bones no structure this power of restoration together with the power of resurrection and the power to prosper will make you indomitable believe me verse 2 verse 2 and cause me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many bones and they were what? very dry listen you will step into the life of people with age long issues the devil has stolen from them it's not just that the situation is dead it was stolen then son of man verse 3 he says can these bones live and he says only thou knowest verse 4 this is one key to releasing the anointing and he said unto me prophesy speak Hagar speak command Hagar instruct compel let it be upon these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones who speaks to bones who speaks to bones dogs eat bones men throw bones God speaks to bones he says hear ye the word of the Lord and then let's read verse 5 and behold I will cause bread to enter you go to verse 7 so I prophesied not as I wanted as I was commanded and there was what? a noise the same noise in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 there was a sound and behold a shaking and the Bible says and behold bones came together this is not just resurrection this is restoration are we together? we are going to pray hold hands together in the next five minutes I'd like you to blast in tongues like an angry man who is tapping into power lift your voice and pray pray like a man like a woman who is about to take delivery of unction to function praise Kata ba 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 kata ba na na ba na 
Alléluia. Alléluia. I like you to look in one minute at your life. See the barriers that have stood before you. Because they are about to be smashed into pieces. Something is about to come upon your life. That will move you forward. Something is about to come upon your life. That will drive you to the next level. Something is about to come upon your life. The power to run. The power to run. The power to run. The power to fly. Please lift your hands. Listen, it is not about falling down. Don't be distracted with falling down. Open your spirit and receive something that will change your life. Don't just focus on falling down. The Holy Ghost is doing his thing. But beyond falling down, open up your heart to receive. Children, adults, don't say no. Some people cannot receive. You have a child, stand for them. Don't say they cannot receive. Hallelujah. Paul said, For I long to see you, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. Lift your hands, I want to pray for you. The glory of God is revealed in a man when there is an anointing. Right now in the name that is above all names. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic office. And I declare that at the count of three. By the ministry of angels. By the unction. By the ministry and the mystery that surrounds this office right now at the count of three I declare that this unction fall inside and outside online and everywhere one two three take it take it take it right now receive it power receive it Fire Shaka Baba Katala Baba inside the overflows right now, right now, right now. Every row, every row, every column, every row. The thousands following online. I release it upon you. You that are listening in your home, you that are listening in your room. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost in your life, in your ministry, in your business. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power. Take it now. Lift your hand. There is an anointing called the power to prosper. Lift your hands and receive it. I pray for you now. Shaka Paratai. I have seen this in my life. I have seen this in this ministry. The ministry of man making your life easy. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive the power to prosper. Take the power to prosper. Take it 
take the power to prosper in your ministry take the power to prosper in your job the power to prosper in your academics the power to prosper in your business the power to prosper the major things that I know God is going to be doing tonight is healing the sick. There are mysterious diseases that are coming and latching upon people. You see people dying for diseases and sicknesses with no name. It's, it's like headache but it's not headache. It's like chest pain but it's not chest pain. It's like asthma but it's not asthma. It's like a lump but it's not a lump. It's like a growth, but it's not a growth. Whatever it is, we know it's an oppression of the devil. Please sit down. Let me finish up and then we'll pray. So by the ministry of the anointing, number two. How blessings manifest. The second dimension is by the impartation of wisdom. And understanding the second way that the word becomes flesh is that the Lord by his spirit will impart upon a man the spirit of wisdom and understanding there are certain results that don't need the supernatural as it were they just need an awareness of the laws of God and the fortitude to walk in accordance with those principles There are dimensions that doesn't just need an event. The power of God is coming on two people outside. Two people outside. Please bring them here. Two people outside. I started sensing a very mighty grace. Ah, tonight will be a great night of impartation. Please bring them here. Just listen to the word, the Lord will do a quick work. Two people, I see like rain. The rain of the Spirit is about to be drenched. For I spoke a word. Ali Baru Please bring them. The Lord is saying, I'm shifting you, both of you, that you are entering a dimension of the favor of God. This is what I'm seeing. You came here to contact the grace that will bring you into a strange realm of favor. And I declare by the spirit of grace that everything that is not of the Christ over your lives and destinies, this is miracle service. It must bow to the name and the Lordship of Jesus. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming out to me.
Number three, and then we'll pray. The third way that the word becomes flesh, that possibilities get to you, is through the ministry of men. 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 Men are God's conduits. They communicate possibilities. Most of the favor that you need is already in the hands of a man. You need the ministry of men. I don't just mean the prophetic ministry of men. You need the giving ministry of men. You need the lifting ministry of men. You need the endorsing ministry of men. Please tonight, let your expectations be high. God will not disappoint you. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes a testimony. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon that situation, the word becomes a testimony. When you are given spiritual illumination, wisdom, understanding, the fortitude to comprehend spiritual things, then the word becomes flesh. When men are introduced in your life, men are carriers of possibilities, not just spiritual possibilities. There are men that have the wealth to give you. There are men that have the endorsement, the leverage, their credibility is an asset. They can bring it upon your life and turn your life Everything that we seek for in this place tonight comes under these three categories. There are matters that only the anointing can solve tonight. There are matters that the quickening of the spirit, providing illumination, will channel you to solve. But there are things that men, 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 given by God. Listen, when the man at Get Beautiful met Peter and John, he didn't say such as in is in heaven. He said such as I have. There are things men have. Please hear me. There are things that men have. And they can give it. There are things that men have. And they can give it. A man can have a car. And give you the key to the car. A man can have. But you see. The things that men have. Real blessings. Are not physical. When a man gives you anything physical, it's not really a blessing. It's just a donation. Real blessings are spiritual. All the sons of Abraham, he gave them physical gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him the blessing. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to do a quick walk tonight. But I trust God to heal the sick. This, 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 there is a grace today to, to damage all kinds of infirmity. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all. Healing all. They that were oppressed of the devil. Tonight... It will lift up that report, that threat that stands before the God of heaven. There are many of us here, I believe, who are in ministry. We may not exactly have needs. Tonight is also a night of impartation. Listen, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It can be transferred. You can carry something back that you did not come with. You can carry a grace that while you were in the car coming, it was not yet in your life. And your results will show what has been introduced in your life. Are we together? Please rise up, lift up your voice in one minute. And declare, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm a believer tonight. Everywhere, outside, inside. Pray.
that diligently seek the rewarder, the healer, the lifter. I want to pray. Please listen. Listen. Please don't get used to the ritual of what is done here. It is not just a ritual to pray, have people fall under the anointing. Be sensitive to what God is doing everywhere. But be sensitive to what he is doing in you, around you. Be sensitive to the graces you are receiving. Be sensitive to the prophecy that is coming upon you. Be sensitive to the things that are changing. Be sensitive to the mantles that are resting upon you. Be sensitive to what is happening. Be sensitive to the speakings of the Spirit. So I, I don't want you to get used to the, the, the ritual. Oh, you are about to see people in front. No, 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 no. Let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven and he's the lifter of men. Please hear me. You are a visitor here coming. You are welcome. We'll acknowledge you later on. But please, insist that you did not waste your time to come for nothing. Please, I know you have heard and I know you came for an experience. Many of us have inconvenienced ourselves not under the best of conditions to be here. Please don't waste your stay. Let your heart be open to carry something tangible. Hallelujah. Satan is behind many predicaments of our lives. Satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen. Please let me have your attention because I want to pray now. And the power of God, listen please. As I begin to pray, there are people here. You see, God may not necessarily, don't worry, it's okay. Excuse me, that's all right. Leave your seats, please. There are people here who are sincere people, even believers. But your life and destiny is under the strange influence of the operation of darkness. The Bible says many things happen in Mount Zion. And one of it is that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please, I like you to believe. This is no ordinary prayer. Remember, it is the Spirit and the Bride that is talking. You are only seeing the Bride, but it's the Spirit and the Bride. I'm about to pray, and I want you to please believe. Because everything that does not represent Christ must go today, now. A few weeks ago, I had an encounter and the Holy Spirit told me you are about to experience a new lifting in your authority in the Spirit. Listen, please. This is the first time I'll be sharing it. And I saw, every time I see it, this is what I see. I see like a badge in the Spirit, a promotion. And the, the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension that as you declare, you will see it happen. It's, this thing is a grace. It's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. 
I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondages. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now, I declare by the Spirit of the Christ. And I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. And except God is not God, any planting that is not of the Christ over your life and your destiny, I speak by the grace of God Almighty that it must let you go. Now, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command devils, I command spirits, yokes that have tied down the destinies of men. Be gone now by the spirit of the Christ. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Go now. Release every destiny. 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 I decree and declare. The Bible says even the captives, the lawful captives shall be delivered. Therefore I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be delivered now. 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 I command closed doors be open. Closed doors be open. Right now be open. Closed by the hand of darkness. I declare be open. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yahweh. is showing me chains over people's heads I decree and declare anyone here under any kind of yoke at the count of three inside outside online I want you to shout that name again it's not a ritual done out of unbelief there is force and power in the name one two three every orchestration go now be loose now. Be loose now. In the name of Jesus, be loose. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. The Lord is showing me people who have been at the same level for many years. There is nothing you do in time that moves you forward. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs. I'm about to pray that prayer. Anyone who has been kept at the same position, right now by the anointing of the Spirit, I declare that limitation broken now. Broken now. Help them. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right away, I want to pray against barrenness. I'm sensing the grace. Don't wait till you are married. If there is anyone here by the Spirit of God, 
by whatever means your womb has been closed by the authority of heaven I declare right now I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people married or unmarried let that womb be open now be open now be open now I tell you the anointing of God is coming on people whether you are married or not some of you are standing in for your loved ones I declare again womb be open now be open now be open now be open now I command every devil I'm seeing such I'm still seeing people's feet tied like a chain around the feet of people right now I decree and declare every chain Makatoska Barakata holding anyone now in the name of Jesus I break those chains now I break those chains now I break those chains now I break those chains now. Hallelujah. If you have any abdominal pain, lay your hands right now. Lay your hands just on your stomach. Any kind of abdominal pain. Doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid, doesn't matter whatever. Just lay your hands here right now. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. Right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is coming upon your stomach area. And in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle right now. Let there be a miracle right now. I'm seeing a number in the realm of the Spirit 21. And the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people. And that grace is for direction. You are at a point in your life where you are confused. You honestly don't know what to do. But right now I stretch my hands, 21. I see it in the realm of the spirit. Right now let the anointing of the spirit bring in direction, ending confusion. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Direction, direction, direction in ministry, direction in business, direction, geographic direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for speed. I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression. I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hands by the privilege of God's grace and I declare, I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three. Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three. Receive speed, 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 speed in your destiny, speed. Do in one month what one year could not do. Do in one month what five years could not do. Do in one month in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're trying to conserve time. There is a lot to do. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. 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 All those who are in front under the anointing here, I command the devils that have oppressed you. This is the house of God. 
right now at the count of three, release them, release everything you have tied down. One, two, three, go. Go now. Every strange spirit, go now. Go now. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Janet, I'm hearing a name, Janet. Hold on. Please don't, don't be rowdy. Just relax. Stand up, my dear. That lady on green, stand up. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax. Calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen. God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many genets. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you, as I'm, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God, we're going to have to do a quick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the Spirit. Let's just walk that instruction first. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare on all of you. I may not have time to prophesy one by one, but every barrier that stands between you and the next level, I declare, let it go now. I curse it by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming on a lady just where this my brothers are standing bring that person just this row I'm seeing a cloud just right here right now as I'm speaking the anointing of the spirit is coming on one person there please bring the person it's a lady bring her Janet I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ hi This is an instruction God is giving me. There is a family. I'm seeing the family. It's a whole pattern. Nobody marries. No matter what happens. I'm about to pray. The power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family. Please, I want you to believe and receive. I declare that marital delay. This is the instruction God is giving me. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. The Lord is opening my eyes. And in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing the map of Benway State. An anointing is coming right now on Benway. God is bringing a miracle. I release my, I stretch my hands and I declare a miracle right now. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. Ben wasted, Ben wasted, Ben wasted. I cause the workings of darkness over that territory. In the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking me to a neighboring state. I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state. And the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft. I don't know who are those who are from there. But I stretch my hands. Kogi state. May that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory. That is under the yoke of bondage. Be free now. Be free now. Kogi state. Be free now. Be free now. God does these things that men will fear him. My sister, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Something is leaving you. This is what I'm seeing. For you and for your family members. Let that devil never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh. Yahweh.
I'm hearing a name Agnes prophecy takes a lot of time so we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes 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 I'm hearing that name please very quickly because I want to take our time and God is visiting three families at Overflow 2. Overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing. Just like fire. Three families. Three families by the Spirit of the Living God. Agnes. Who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes. Your sister. No, you are not here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that violent devil must let you go now even by the Spirit of the... There is no hiding place in the name of Jesus. There is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness. I curse you by the God of heaven and I declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just hold that there. I'm going to hold your hand. It's a strange mystery. I'm going to hold your hand, but the person who will fall is on this rope. Bring the person for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, just don't worry, leave the baby. The person who will fall is not this lady. It's on this rope, like this, this rope right to the back. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare by the Spirit of the living God, that everything that does not name the name of Christ, right now I command it must go. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must go by the grace of God. I set you free, my dear. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you. Father, there is... Please don't be embarrassed. We may not prophesy to everyone. But there is a woman here, don't be embarrassed. You just had a miscarriage. Usually I would not ask you to come, but the Lord is asking to come out. Who is that person, please? There is a Yoruba family that is under a very strange attack. Under a strange attack. I'm praying right now. I don't know where they are, but I'm going to pray for you by the Spirit. Please don't confuse the cases so that I can minister to them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that family. It's a Yoruba family from Kwara State. Yoruba family from Kwara State. I'm seeing it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. That family is here or anyone who represents that family, I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear, that everything that is not the planting of the Lord, the hand of God is upon you. And the Lord is saying in the seasons that come, you are going to start having visitations. There is a visitation that God is bringing. 
and that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to. And the Lord is saying that you'll be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, huh? Because that's the same way you will come here and testify. Listen, God is not going to embarrass you for nothing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. This is one big family and we're intelligent people. We will never come and just embarrass someone like that. If there's anything that looks embarrassing, just know that these things um, are spiritual. My dear, that young lady, go in. Come, lift your hands. God is not done with you yet. Huh? This is, this is, you would have left this girl now. She would have probably just gone like that. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, take what you put in her dream life. Let it live now. Take what you put inside her through the dream. Miscarriage. Please don't feel embarrassed. This is a family. Did I pray for you? Did I pray for you? It's all right. If I prayed for you, just go back. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go and return with your child according to the time of life. No more miscarriage whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, you will return with child according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, please place your hand. In the name of Jesus, return with child. Return with child. In the name of Jesus. There is someone here, you are in ministry. I've not done the impartation yet, but I'm seeing an anointing come on you. And this is for your ministry. There is a level of expansion that you have been praying for. And God is about to answer that prayer. I stretch my hands. I don't know where that person is. But in the name that is above all names, may that anointing, like a mighty rushing wind, in the name of Jesus. There's someone here, God, this night, is giving you a ministry to teenagers. An anointing is coming on you, your ministry will be to teenagers. I don't know where that person is, but Lord, I stretch my hands. Right now, may that man to find the person. In the name of Jesus, I birth that ministry by the Spirit. I birth that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare, in the name of Jesus, let there be a birthing. I draw from the bowels of prophecy, and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Your sister and you, why is she here? Miscarriage? Are you married? You are sure? In the name of Jesus, place your hand there. I agree with you. Every plague of miscarriage goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ, according to the time of life, return with your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your sister, where is she? Abuja. Tell her that she was prayed for and she should respect a miracle. In the name of Jesus, I declare. You're standing in for her, but I declare the power of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession. Now, I know that it's, it's, a, it's a grace we will all desire, but there are four exact people. Four exact people. Some inside, some outside. Lord, I don't know where they are, but that grace, a dimension of the intercessory ministry, capacity to travail by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is she here? Come. Where are you from?
Kaduna. How long have you been married? Last year. Last year. Yes, sir. Madam, you came out here for miscarriage, but what God is dealing with is more than miscarriage, huh? We'll pray for you. Where's your husband? Here, sir. Because I'm seeing him here. Yes, sir. Is he here? Yes, sir. Where is he? Husband, please come. Is the man here? How are you, my friend? Stand up. God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? Um, Where? I'm up in Kaduna. Sir. Kaduna. I want to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from Ogusu. There is a grace. Please hear me. What? What? Where do you work? I work with the Alliance of Africa. There are two things I'm seeing. One, I'm seeing real estate. Number two, I'm seeing distribution. Distribution of things. Go and write them down and pray over them. This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God. You hear what I'm telling you? You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away want and lack from you. And that's why I said this is more than just the issue of barrenness or whatever it is. Huh? We'll pray for you. And madam, I want to stop the dreams. Dreams. Huh? I have to pray for you. Sometimes you don't share them. But there are dreams that are oppressions, a lot of oppressions. I want to pray for you. This will end in your life. Amen. In the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Sir, this is July, August, September. By October, write it down. Your life will change. Amen. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. You see, my, my brother, the realm of the spirit, what is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. It's the grace for favor that came on you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you by the spirit of God. These three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, put your hand in your, on your stomach. According to the time of life, huh? in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing something like a rope being loosed from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them. So that the day they come and stand it's, it's not to glorify a man. It is to show that God, oh, God is still alive. Huh? I lose this in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will return with a strange miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sir, can I talk to you please? This man. Yes, sir. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. I don't know you. Is it alright if I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Three things. Number one, I want to pray that sickness will not take you to the grave. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is our, our prophet. I want to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, I want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released, let it come to you. Does it make sense what I'm telling you? I will pray for you. This is one of the reasons why you are here. I want to pray. It will surprise you the way God will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you. And then number three, there is a man from Lagos that God is going to connect you with. God is going to use that man to turn your life around. I don't know what you do, but please, I want you to mark this. But the most important prophecy is sickness. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is an attack. It will start one morning. You just stand up and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having memory loss. It's of the devil we must pray. Madam, come. God is about to change your life. Because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. 
Is that true? Yes, sir. Stand here. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer. Yes, and you are saying the Lord should, that should visit yes, you, that you did not come from far for yes, nothing. Sir. Where did you come from? Where are the other two people? We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I congratulate you in the name of Jesus because your life will change in a very remarkable way. Madam, I want to pray for you. Look at me. Stand up, my friend. Why by the laugh here? Who is sick? Madam, I want to pray for you. You see, ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, you're going to start having what looks like a growth. And it will later become cancer. Because I'm looking at this woman. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just whine. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Madam. You did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. No. I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister and the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never, 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 never. That every one encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir. I want to pray for you. He's, where is he coming from? Adam Awatu. I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. Come, you are a very nice man, but please stand up. Please stand up. I Don't cry. Oh, yeah. oh dear. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. Oh. You just see people laugh and praise the Lord. That, that is a dance of faith. It's just a, a joy of faith because I'm looking at this man you will not believe what this man has gone through. Is that true? What do you do, sir? I'm a loan drunk. Washing with his hand. Yes. This is what I'm saying. This man, Kai, oh dear. This man is supposed to be connected to a politician in Adamawa State. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zakaria. His name is Zakaria. Yes, he's presenting. This is what I'm telling you. Just listen. Let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member, and yet he's doing. Now, I'm not saying laundry is an insult, but the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. We had a good relationship, and just of a sudden. He changed. He changed. No, he did not change. Somebody told him huh, that they can use you to kill him. And that he has, it's not only you. I'm not a pro, don't go around fighting anybody. Huh? That this man one day will kill him. They were saying, Honorable Kayankali, be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that who already know you. Because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything away. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you this world we live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how may your enemies not get to the gates before you. That the counsel of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny. And this man, it's not that he's using a laundry to washing clothes like it, like an animal. Sir, you have come here for God to change your life. 
and I'm praying for you by the God of heaven, the one who put this miracle service together. Let things change now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare favor upon your life. Let things turn around in the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? English house, I speak anyone. <laughs> Divine visitation in every area of my family. I will pray for I you. I want male children. <laughs> oh, healing. You have female children. I have two. And you but want I have a male. Allergies. Yes, I need male children. <laughs> I want God to God to change me. That's what uh, there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want you to say what you're about to say loud, huh? Because one day your husband will be changed and he will hear this, this miracle service message. It's true. I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise us. It's God that gives children. And, and I don't mean to insult anyone, but please, let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children, otherwise you are not this. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you than to antagonize your wife or husband. There is a culture of the kingdom. Listen, when we get born again, the values, the value system of the kingdom, the spirit life must be at work in us. In as much as I know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children, male and female. When our people are getting married, I pray for them that God will give them children, male and female. But you cannot antagonize your wife or your husband and say, give me... Um, uh, male children, female children. Of course, I understand. I'm, I'm an African. Because of issues of inheritance and other things, but we have to be careful. Whatever God has not given you, you cannot have it. And if you go to the devil to have it, let me tell you, the consequence will be waiting for you. Are we together? Madam, look at me. Do you believe if I pray for you, yes, you will come here with a male child? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think I Madam, what did you see me doing for you in a dream? Sir, you declare he lives upon my life and you say it is done. Listen, number one, number one, yes, God is bringing favor to your yes, life. Sir. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male child. Amen. I want you to believe it. Amen. You believe that? Yes, Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman. In the name of Jesus, let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. And we agree, we receive that your husband is born again. And he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? I'm from Adama. We have together. She's my okay, sister. I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing. Kaya cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a charm. Yeah. Believe what I'm telling you. Father, I decree and declare, surprise these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changes your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Come. Who came from Kano? From where? From Air Force Base. Air Force Base. This is your husband. Yes. What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said God can do it, Abby, Madam. Mm. Since 2005. Yes. No child. No mercies again. <laughs> Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry... I say this, please, reduce public life, watching football, 
going for marriages that you don't have any business to. I'm not saying you should not honor people, but the times that we're living in now, the problems on people is not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine that can solve people's problems. 2005, how many years is that? 14 years, no child, her period ceased completely. The devil sat on it. Let me see how you have a child. Madam, don't cry. It's okay. I don't know you. I've never seen you. You can see. How will you be sitting there and then God will just call you? I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ears. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing... Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? In the name of Temeko, I, I, I banish them far. You hear what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a man, I'm not, please, I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come, supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Six months now. I'm, I'm the only one. Six months? Yes. He has gone away. He, he just, I, I went to his office to tell him that I'm coming to Zaria today. So he now said, uh, he, he, now, I, he just looked at me. You're not divorced, <laughs> but he has just gone. Sir? He, he just went, but you're not divorced. Uh, he's saying uh, where they are, where they are drinking this thing, so he just left me. It may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba, when people go through things, be careful. When you are about to cross people and call them evil and call them this, remember that stability is according to the measure of your understanding of who God is. And there are times that even the strong get pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. We are people of love. Don't come here and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman, and think the husband is this, mm -mm. We are not here to show who is right or who is wrong. We are here to show that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam, hold my hands. I command this spirit in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus. Madam, I speak to you. First, may God reconcile you back to your husband. Second, you will take in according to the time of life. Your baby will stay and you will return back to the child. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage, I curse it now in Jesus' name. See, anyone here, I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now, then we'll pray for the sick. We have to be fast. But no, you don't have to come out. But you are here the moment you start a relationship with a guy. He becomes serious and just when he's deciding to do anything marriage it must scatter you continue to enter relationships relationships re loving and unloving loving and unloving today you are in love tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself I'm praying right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit inside and outside anyone who is under that category by the God of heaven let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity you see please give this woman her photo that woman under the anointing we have to pray um, the Lord is asking me, we are praying. I, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm not wasting your time. The Lord is showing me a family here. I may not ask you to come out. But in this family, you never settle maritally, but you will have children. No matter how you go around it, you find out that you have children out of marriage. out of And, and it's not like the men 
will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children. The Lord wants to deliver that family right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Why is she coming? Why is she coming out? The, the family is, she just came out on her own. No, don't worry. Well, she, she, she's crying because of her pain. It's possible she's part of that family. But I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not, you see the thing about the anointing I told you, sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that, that you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children. But the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children. I pray right now. I don't know where they are. But in the name of Jesus Christ, Shabakato Kakis Kaparanda Kadosha Lakata, Empratose Bakatoshiata, we declare that that yoke is destroyed now. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. That yoke is destroyed now. My dear, look at me. Come. It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. You see, let me tell you, for all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because let me remind you, even as he has reminded you that it pays to serve Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It pays to serve Jesus. It may not look like he will come every day, but the day he comes, he will come with dignity and honor and lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hands. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockade to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name someone will run out under the anointing hold the person and bring the person out that will be the last prophecy the power of God is coming on someone it's not something you can control by the anointing you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit please when that happens bring the person I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray for the sick right now it's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit Meanwhile, let this lady come. My dear, hold my hands. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus. I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it goes now over by the grace of God. There are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly gentleman will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children, that's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit now I curse something is burning here I curse that spirit now I curse that devil now in the name of Jesus Christ Don't be embarrassed, but I see the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hands. Let that devil leave you now. That a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw. In the name of Jesus, by the spirit of the living God, I curse that spirit. And I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now. 
by the God of heaven, I declare, be free from that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick. Our time is gone, but we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. All the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe. Um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three. If you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who have prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer, but particularly if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue and we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we're going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. While you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer requests? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them. And let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one, um, overflow two, overflow three. And then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down. Let's call that overflow four. Okay, okay, there is, there is overflow 2B, then there is overflow 4. Please listen, this is overflow 1, this is overflow 2, there is overflow 2B from this place right to the roadside, second equa down, then there's overflow 4, just from the gate of overflow 3, then we have overflow 3 in the main building, and then online. Please make your way, come out and stand According to those various overflows, there will be people there to minister to you right now. We'll do it very fast. Our time is gone. Please submit your prayer request. I'll be laying hands on all of them here right now. You can just wave them. There will be someone by your side. We apologize for those of you standing because your seats were foiled. You would soon have it back and then be back to your seat. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us, you can allow them to sit on your seat pending when their seats will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Stretch your hands to this request. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. 
God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service. This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we are declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God. Even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name that is above all names, there are, hold on please, there are people here this is a death sentence. There are people here. This is an impossible situation. There are people here. God will, the person God will talk to is far. But I pray what looks impossible. I bow my knees to the God of heaven. The one who honors me when I pray. And I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living Lord. I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith that by this time next month, you return here rejoicing. Please, don't let the devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been. Uh-uh. 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 Every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered, we release it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every pattern that is not just an individual, but is a pattern that is written here. As God is visiting you here, every other person connected to you whose request you have written here we command a miracle for them where they are in the name of jesus christ there are situations here that need the blood i declare by the mystery of the blood there are three that bear witness in the heavens the father the word and the spirit there are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven, by the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant, we cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request. In the name of Jesus. And the king could not sleep in the night. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And he saw there written what Mordecai did. Whoever must remember you for this request to be granted. By the God of heaven, we open the book of remembrance tonight. Any man holding what belongs to you, which is the reason why you are writing anything here. We put pressure on them to release it now. Yeah. 
every family here wept in shame and reproach it looks like there is no dignity the speakings of God does not seem to find expression here I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven please help those under the anointing that by the power of the Holy Ghost shame and reproach ends this night shame and reproach ends this night shame and reproach ends this night therefore I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here by the God of heaven may you see them no more forever may you see them no more forever the same way I stand upon this request I command that you stand upon every challenge in the name of Jesus Christ now I speak over your life the doors that have followed you here closed in the name of Jesus please believe let your don't be distracted focus on the Word of God in the name of Jesus I command those doors be open now be open now be open now be open now every grounded ministry here every grounded business every grounded family hear the word of the Lord I command and I declare come back to life come back to life come back to life come back to life every helper assigned from God who has not yet paid attention to you and what you request I stand by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus I compel them to attend to your matters I compel them to attend to your matters I compel them to attend to your matters everything that should have happened and has not yet happened according to the program of God you know you should have entered that level and you are not there by prophecy I push you to that level by prophecy I push you to that level listen you see let me tell you what I'm doing I'm not just speaking I'm placing something upon your life you may not see it but you leave this place and watch what happens to you then you will see things turn around let me pray for you the kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life please receive this one in the name that is above all names may that mantle like a cloak take favor take favor carry favor carry favor in the name of Jesus every area you have struggled in your life you have done what you know to do in the name of Jesus I declare that that struggle comes to end now Now please listen the anointing your destiny needs for this season please listen every season has a grace requirement every season there are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place I pray for you this is an impartation wherever you are I declare like the dew of heaven the kind of grace you must carry for this season let it land on your destiny now. By this anointing, I forbid you from being ignored. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid you from being ignored. I forbid you from being trivialized. No man will look down on you. They came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. 
for no man can do these things except God be with him. The things that must be done through your hands in this season, for it to be said, this is the Lord's doing. As you are lifting your hands, may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits. Anyone in ministry here, I declare over you, go back to your various assemblies and platforms. Let there be fire on your altar. Fire on your altar. Fire on the ministration. Let the gifts of the spirit work powerfully. In the name of Jesus. We're rounding up. Let's pray over our finances. This issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees. Bringing many families to their knees. Distracting people. The time we should spend on the things of the kingdom. We are focusing on money, what to eat, what to wear, house rent, building projects. It is not the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Ebenezer, the helper of men, I declare this month, even beginning from today, Receive strange financial help. Receive strange financial help. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, strange financial help. Everyone under the sound of my voice, trusting God for an honorable job. Listen, there are jobs that don't have honor. They are time wasters. They are devourers. I pray for you. The kind of job that represents dignity, that will honor you and help you to build your home well. May the God of heaven give you such a job. Let me pray for your spiritual life. If you have cars, you have houses, and your spiritual life is not on fire, you are not doing well. The first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life that your prayer life fire word life fire fellowship with the spirit fire no room for up today down tomorrow i pray for you fresh fire upon your prayer life fresh fire upon your prayer life fresh fire upon your prayer life fresh fire upon your prayer life, your prayer life. every lukewarmness slumber Glutony, these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency. I declare in the name of Jesus, receive victory over them. The grace that can keep a man in the presence of God, the, the staying power that you can stay with the world, stay in prayer, not rushing and rush out. And one power God is not a magician I pray for you the unction to stay receive it in the name of Jesus every dimension in the spirit that is supposed to have been activated there are some of you now listen there are levels of graces you should have left sincerely there are dimensions of power. There are haziness. Certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception. There is a level of authority. There is an office you should be sitting on now. But it's not yet there. I pray for you. The mantle that will shift you to that level. May that grace come upon you now. The mantle that will shift you to that level. Makatoska barakato. May that grace come upon you now. Listen, everything in your life that has refused to grow, God gave you a ministry that has refused to grow. No membership, nobody is placing a demand on your grace. God gave you a business, it has refused to grow. No increase. 
no impact. Anything that is alive grows. Whatever has stopped growth in your life, I bring that thing to an end now. Finally, let me pray, please. The spirit of infirmity. I told you that this is, this is, I came to pray and rebuke that spirit. Because that spirit, like the angel of death, is moving over families, attacking children, attacking all kinds of people. Headache will just kill a man for nothing. Kata, and they will say it's cancer. Pain around your breast. They will say you have a malignant, a tumor. See, let me tell you, whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life. Challenges are not the issue, but that you stand and fight the good fight of faith until you see what God said. If you have not seen what God said, don't stop. I pray for you. The spirit of a warrior, the grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God. May that grace rest upon you now. As a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted at noonday, the spirit of death. If there is anyone here that death is looming around the corridors of your life, or your loved ones, or those connected to you spiritually and by bloodline, I declare, let death lose its grip over you now. Receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about you usurping authority over people. There is a real grace. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. May that grace and may that honor rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise. Mighty God. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we thank you. By the wave offering we receive, we receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. Please let me say this. Let there be no movement till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning. And in reality, we believe that it is the greatest miracle. There are people here who came to this place confused, looking for Jesus sincerely. Religion refused to give you. Sometimes we men of God disappointed you but you are still looking for Jesus. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this night. Don't sit down dilly-dallying. You know that you need Jesus. 
wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projector screens. But you are here, quickly. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now. Quickly. I don't expect you to be thinking about it. Keep standing. It's something you should know. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Don't let any friend hold your hand and say, don't embarrass yourself. Don't let any relative keep you bound. Our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me. Please, believers, listen. It is important that we never lose out on soul winning. Let me say this. It is not just an evangelical agenda. It is not an orthodox agenda. It is not a man of God agenda. It is the only way men come to this kingdom. No matter what we do, please, you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't be careless over soul winning. It is important that people be given an opportunity, except you don't know what salvation is. If you really understand what the new birth is, you will desire even your enemy to be saved. It is the only gateway. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Salvation is a giver's gift to you. You receive it. I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you are standing here rededicating your lives. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing honestly. Some of you are here genuinely for the first time. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you call on his mercy, he will act as though he's not seeing what is wrong with you again. The mercy of God is powerful. Religion is what drives people away from God. Lift your right hand. Those around the various overflows, join them. Please say after me, sincerely. Jesus is in this place. You are not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. This night, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that according to Scripture, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I'm not only heaven bound, but I reign in life. I receive of the Holy Spirit. From today, I declare and forever that I'm a child of God. Amen. I declare over you by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven. The Lord himself is granting you a new beginning. I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way. I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way. For many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you alongside um, those at the various overflows. There should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly. And there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, 
our time is gone, but um, please listen. We're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers, and we're done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us. By God's grace, I know that God will grant us the grace. We'll soon have our place, and we'll reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I, I, know, I welcome everybody. We're going to welcome the first timers now, but particularly, I just want to honor a few people first. I want to bless our precious people, the delegates from um, the King's Court and the Oasis. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The redeemed Christian Church of God. That's, um, that's the church that Nathaniel Bassi pastors. God bless you. Thank you. There are a group of people here, adorable people. These people take they take care of me so much every time we have a meeting around their place and um, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I want us to honor the pastor from Ukraine. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. And um, now I know there are so many people. Please don't find offense. It's by no way belittling you. Every We believe the law of honor is one of our foundational um, values, our pillars here. I just felt... I am indebted to some of the people that are connected to these ones. And so I just wanted to, to do that honor. And I think, I hope I'm right. Yes, it should be him. Um, I saw Elisha Maman somewhere. He just squeezed himself. That's him. May God bless you. Very humble and very great man. I love you. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Every other person who has come here, especially for those of you who came from so very far. Um, aside from those that I called, within a few minutes, I will request that you come um, and stand here so that we will honor you. We believe in honor. And I know that in many churches, they have different ways of receiving people, but we don't fake things and we don't pretend things here. When we call you out to honor you, we really mean it. It's not some Christian stage managed acting, no. Genuinely, sincerely. So wherever you are, Aside from the extreme overflows, I would request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. But for those of us who are here, overflow one, overflow two, please gallantly walk and come right here. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to honor you. You're that important and we love you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Hallelujah. Please stand. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let them come while I talk because of time. Keep coming. Let me tell you this. You see, it's all right. Praise God. Just listen to me while they come. It's a lesson that I want to teach all of us. Please learn this. Never take men for granted. When, when God honors you, please hear me, pastors. I tell you why we stop getting members in our churches. Because we get to points where we believe we are too big to honor the people. In other words, they don't mean anything. I always thank God and appreciate every one person who takes the pain to come here. Thank God for the wonderful things that he's doing. But remember that nobody is obliged anywhere to honor you and to promote what you represent. And when you find a people who can make such investments, value them. Are we together? Whether you're a pastor, whether you're a businessman, this world is the world of men. Place honor on men. He says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Influence is your blessing when you honor men. Thank you so much, every one of you. I wish I had the time to really walk to you one by one and hug every one of you. And I mean it from the depth of my heart. But on behalf of Jesus Christ himself, the apostle of the church, I welcome you to Koinonia in the name of Jesus. Many of you have heard about the wonderful things that God is doing here. Many of you have partaken of the same. And it's my joy to truly welcome you. You have come from far within and outside this nation. Um, I'm sure that there are people here that cut across all walks of life. Thank you very much. We truly appreciate you. This is our miracle service. Um, we meet here Fridays and special times on Sundays um, when there's a fixed time. But I just want you to know that I love you. We love you as a family of faith. 
Thank you for taking the time. And um, we want to pray for you. Truly, let me tell you this. You will not have to tell people you came here. The glory and the kind of results you will see in your life will be a testament. Amen. Let's stretch our hands to them and bless them. We love you and we are praying for you. From the depth of our hearts, we are blessing you. Blessing your ministries, blessing your businesses, blessing your career, blessing your family. We want to see the hand of God upon your life. We want to see you loving the Lord like never before. We want to see you growing in the things of God. We want to see you walking in purpose and destiny. We want to see the gates of hell stamped by and through your life. This is why we pray for you. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. The Lord reveal Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.